There are two distinct clean room cleansing activities. The first is the removal of contaminants which can be seen with the naked eye. This is sometimes called gross contamination, therefore gross cleaning, or simply cleaning, which is the term we'll use. Sometimes the cleaning process itself creates contamination in the form of visible residues. These are chemical residues that result from specific cleaning actions and must be removed by additional treatment. The second involves the removal or neutralizing of those things which cannot be seen by the naked eye. It's sometimes called precision cleaning or alternatively decontamination, which is the term we'll use. Particles of less than 0.1 micron. Large particles are relatively easy to remove due to their size in relation to the forces holding them to a surface. Small particles are harder. The smaller the particle, in the low sub-micron sizes, the more difficult it is to remove due to its smaller size in relation to the forces holding it. In fact, there are four methods of removing particles. The first is by suction using vacuum cleaners. The second by wiping. Third, by adhesive contact with cleanable rollers. And fourth, by blowing. Of course, cleaning by blowing should be used very cautiously as it moves the contaminants rather than removes them and causes cross-contamination. Once particles have been dealt with, moist wiping and wet washing are the means for removing and neutralizing the other contaminants. They work by a combination of four parameters. First, mechanical action. Second, chemical action. Third, the temperature of the solution. Normally, water at ambient temperatures can be used. However, an increase in temperature may increase the speed of the chemical reaction. And fourth, the time required for the solution to be most effective. Room zoning by area is common, but in addition, priority classification can be added to meet another cardinal rule that cleaning should be done by working from the cleanest part to the dirtiest part. The rule is that the lower the surface, the dirtier the surface. This means that surface soiling is likely to be greatest furthest away from the ceiling filters. So work should always be carried out using a clean room wipe. Always folded in such a way that it presents a clean face on every application. Because even though it's a clean room that's being cleaned, it's surprising how much soiling can be seen on a wipe. It should be folded so that the next clean face is readily available. Wiping must always be done so that the cleaning solution is applied to the wipe. Never, repeat never, pour or spray cleaning solutions onto the surface to be cleaned. After vacuuming, walls should be moist wiped to remove particles, remembering to use straight overlapping strokes. Then where specified, wet cleaned. Light, where a high intensity of white light reflects particles. Ultraviolet light, which causes certain organic materials to fluoresce. Test wipes, which show visible signs of soiling. Witness plates. And surface particles.